Hello, my lovely friends. My name is Ava, and today we're gonna be talking about hate to love romance recommendations. Hate to love enemies to lovers. I prefer the term hate to love because true enemies to lovers, I feel like is very rare and hard for me to believe. So like a bunch of these are either hate or dislike to love romances, or you can call enemies to lovers, whatever you want to call it. I've been definitely in the mood for hate to love romances because of season two of Bridgerton. I feel like a lot of people feel that way. The angst attention that comes with hate to love or dislike to love is immaculate you know and so um, I have recommendations here 10 books that I feel like are great books to read if you want to get like that same vibe and speaking of season two of Bridgerton I do have a box that I want to show you really fast I am a rep for hello lovely box um their site and my code ava15 is linked down below in the comments if you want to check them out but this was their viscount watch box so these were items that um you could get while watching season two of bridgerton Oop, <laughs> or just getting in the mood of bridgerton so i'm going to show you what is in here first i want to mention this shirt that came with it um i have worn it before if you've seen this picture on my instagram but this one is a dreaming of a viscount and there you have newt little newt here oh, he's so cute um so this shirt is so comfy amazing i have been loving like sleeping in it but i've also worn it out before as you can see by the picture that i show you so i've been loving this and then i'm going to show you the other items in here here we have a all natural face mask a just peachy face mask we have a pillow case which i'm definitely putting on my pillow very soon because it's so cute oop it's upside down <laughs> This one says let's swoon with a b on it and if you don't know i am a total like person who collects things yellow and like with bees on them like prints and stuff so this is just so stinking cute i love the color gonna be amazing my room has no like blue in it but it's so comfy that i'm gonna use it anyway then i also have a bag of tea here this tiara also came in here so you could wear it <laughs> Um, this is really cute. Um, definitely gets you in the mood for Bridgerton and all things royal-esque. And then you have a little treat. This is a date and cashew energy ball, apple pie flavored. Wish I could eat these. Unfortunately, I cannot. I'm on a really specific diet due to my chronic illness right now. And nuts is a definite no-no on that list. So, but I'm going to give these to my parents if they want to try them, um, which they will be very happy about. And we have these cute socks. Oh, let me... There we go. Cute socks. <laughs> Cute and purple and very soft. Oop, they're attached there. I'll cut that in a second. But they're so soft. Like, I love comfy socks. Like, I'm a sock person, like a comfy sock person. I'm wearing some right now. I love them. Um, I don't like my bare feet on the floor. So these are so comfy and amazing. I'll be using them all the time. There's also this chapstick raspberry victory. As you can see, Ooh, raspberry victory. And then there's uh newt and kate and edwina on the side too i love hello lovely boxes um chapsticks they're amazing and they smell amazing they do uh i have like a little collection now i'm obsessed there's also this lollipop it's a honey lollipop with lemon very cute and then there's also these cards that come with it so this one says you bench the show now read the book and here's the book on the front and then there's a code on the back here that tells you that you can like get the book at a discounted price using their code on the back and then we also have like six like free ebook downloads which super cool super cool i love that they do that but there you have it those are some uh things that I can use while re-watching Bridgerton. I've already watched it, but I do want to do a re-watch -re -re soon. Um, so yeah, you can use my code AVA15 down below to get um, a box like this or any of the other boxes um, on their site. Let's get into these recommendations because I know y'all want to see those. First, I have an all-time favorite of mine, which is Get a Life Chloe Brown by Talia Hibbert. This book is just fantastic. This series is amazing. So this is um, a romance between Redford and Chloe. Chloe has kind of like a near-death experience at the beginning of this book and realizes that she has not done a lot with her life. So she decides to make a get a life list, 
one of those things is to finally move out of her parents' house. And uh, so she does. And when she's at her new apartment, she ends up meeting the superintendent of the building named Redford. And the two of them do not get off on the right foot at all. They bicker, they banter, and they don't necessarily see each other in a positive light. Red is actually an artist and he really needs help with his art website to like promote his artwork. And Chloe actually designs websites. And so she's like, okay, I'll design websites for you if you help me with my get a life list. And so they do a bunch of things on her get a life list while she's making his website. And it is so stinking cute. And they get to know each other and it develops into this hot, heavy amazingness. Like Talia Hebert writes some amazing hot books. You wouldn't tell by these covers of this series, but these books are incredibly hot. Chloe has a chronic illness called fibromyalgia and her illness is a little similar to mine. And so I really connected her into that aspect, but like the hate to love in here is just so bantery and bickery and it is what leads to amazing angst and tension between the two of them. Next I have Phoenix Unbound by Grace Draven. This is her first book in the Fallen Empire series. This one is about Azarion and Jolene. Jolene is a witch who, um, saves her village every single year. She has fire magic and um, she disguises herself every year as a new woman or like the empire picks a woman from like each town to sacrifice every year. And um, Jolene ends up disguising herself as a new woman every single year in order to save the other women in their village because she can survive the fire. So for years she's been doing this. And Azarion is one of the slave gladiators, a part of the empire. And he is the first person to notice that Jolene has been here before and he is the only person able to see past her glamour. And so then he ends up kidnapping Jolene and they end up escaping the empire and he kidnaps her and brings her to his like village or territory in order to claim his throne. And he thinks that her magic will help him do that. And so there's definitely a hate to love aspect in here. He kidnaps her, <laughs> literally kidnaps her. I love the scene where he does kidnap her is like iconic to me. There is bickering, bantering. Like I feel like a lot of these have bickering and bantering in them. But once they get to Azarion's uh, village and territory, like she's forced to stay there with him and realize who this man really is and falls in love with him. <laughs> Next I have The Unhoneymooners by Christina Lauren. This one is a very big staple in the enemies to lovers category. This book is a fade to black. That's another thing in here. And there is the kind of like miscommunication trope. Anyway, this is about Olive and Ethan and um, Olive's sister is marrying Ethan's brother. Okay. And so they're the um, maid of honor and the best man at the wedding. They're the only two people who have not eaten at the like buffet, the they don't eat seafood, I think. That was the seafood. And so everyone in the wedding, except for them, end up getting food poisoning, including the bride and groom. And so they're not able to go on their honeymoon. And the heroine sister, like, won the honeymoon. And so they could get, like, charged or fined if they don't show up. Olive and Ethan have to pretend to be husband and wife to go on this vacation. And they just plan to spend as little time together as possible, but things might end up being different when they have to uh, pretend to be together because they know people at the resort that they're at. Well, Olive and Ethan both think something of the other person, like Olive thinks that Ethan hates her and Ethan thinks that Olive hates him. And like, it's it was like a miscommunication thing that happened as to why they hate each other, but they hate each other. And so that's a um, big thing going on when they're on this vacation together. and why they're hesitant to go on this vacation together is because they don't like the other person. Like if you're wanting to get into the romance genre, I do recommend this one. It doesn't have any um, explicit scenes in there. It's all closed door, fade to black stuff. Next I have The Truth About Cowboys by Lisa Renee Jones. This is the romance between Jessica and Jason. So Jessica is wanting to get away from her life for a little bit. So she ends up renting a cabin in Airbnb in Texas. And so when she's almost there, she's driving there. When she's almost there, her car gets stuck in the mud on like kind of like a road, a back road. This guy comes up to her, real, like driving by, realizes she stucks, she's stuck and helps her and to get her car out of the mud. And this guy is pretty rude to her the whole time he's doing this. Like you can tell he does not want to do this and he's not ashamed to say that. And so when everything's said and done, she's on her merry way. She's like, man, that guy was rude. Anyway, I won't see him anymore, whatever, it's fine. She ends up going to the cabin she's renting and it's on his ranch. And his grandmother put the, a cabin that she's staying in on Airbnb to get some extra money 
um, without him knowing. The two of them don't like each other, especially from that first meeting. Jason is very broody, a very broody hero because he's gone through some things in his past. He's a previous famous baseball player who had to leave the profession due to family things going on. And so he has a lot of pent up anim animosity, honestly, and like feels like he's not good enough anymore because of how long of a break he took. And so that kind of like comes off on his personality. He's just very damaged. The hate to love aspect in here was amazing because of the bickering. Like I love good bickering romance and like, uh, I was thinking about uh, season two of Bridgerton because their bickering does get hot and heavy with me in this. It is good. It is good. I love a good bicker banter, okay? <laughs> Next, I have Only When It's Us by Chloe Lees. This is her first book in the Bergman Brothers series. This one is about Willa and Ryder. Willa is a soccer player who is in college and she goes to one of her classes and she ends up missing a few classes due to her the sport. She like has to go to games and stuff. And so she goes to the professor and is like, hey, like, can I have the notes because I missed class? He was like, yeah, go ask the person who sits next to you for notes or whatever. And so she goes to ask the guy who sits next to her named Ryder for notes and he ignores her. And she's like, that guy is so rude. Like, why is he ignoring me? I just want my notes. Like, that's all I want. And so she has this view of him built in her head and has been like, basically fuming whenever she sits next to him now because he ignores her. And then she finds out that he's deaf. And he never heard her. And she kind of like puts her foot in her mouth. And it's like, oh my gosh. <laughs> so um, even after that point though, they start to talk and get to know each other and they end up being paired for a um, project. The two of them bicker banter and do not like each other and are very upset by the fact that the professor paired them together to be partners. They're having to do all this other stuff for their project and they, uh, fall in love obviously. I think this is a great start to the series. The rest of the books are amazing in the series as well. I really recommend checking them out. Next I have The Simple Wild by K.A. Tucker. This is a very popular romance book so if you haven't heard of it I'm shocked honestly. So this is about Kala and Jonah. Kala gets a phone call one day telling her that her father is very ill and he is likely going to pass soon and so she goes to travel to see her father who she hasn't seen in like over a decade. And so he lives in Alaska and she's very much a city girl, not an Alaskan wilderness kind of gal, you know? And so there she meets Jonah who is a pilot for her dad's plane company. Man, do they just not get it off at all at first. <laughs> like he just blatantly does not like her and glares at her all the time. She's like, what is up with this dude? What have I done to him? I haven't done anything to him. So his animosity towards her leads to her dislike for him. This is a story about her getting to know Jonah Moore and her father. Her father is a big part in here um, that um, is very emotional. So this book does get emotional at times, but this is a beautiful story and I really, really recommend reading it. Next, I have Wicked Abyss by Cressley Cole, book number 17 in the Immortals After Dark series. I know this is deep into the series. I don't think you can read it on its own, but I love talking about this book whenever I can because it is like one of my favorites ever. I love it. This one is about Cian and Calliope. So Cian is essentially the ruler of this underworld dimension and if you become the ruler of this dimension you start to essentially look like the stereotypical Satan and devil so your skin will turn red, you get horns, a tail, like you'll start to look like it's stereotypical Satan and so uh, that is what Cian is going through right now. He is not happy about his look right now. Um, he's very self-conscious about it. But then one day his priorities shift when he realizes that there's a woman in the world on like our plane, our earth, that is his fated mate's reincarnation. And so he sets out to kidnap her and to seek retribution for what his mate did to him many, many years ago because she did some horrible things to him. And he, of course, is not over it. And so he kidnaps Calliope and locks her up in this tower in his realm. And she is furious and she does not know what this guy is doing because she does not know about her past life at all, even though she looks exactly like his mate. But he just wants justice for what she did to him. But she doesn't know what she did to him. <laughs> and so the two of them hate each other. He hates her because of what she did in her past life. And she hates him because of him kidnapping her. This book gives a lot of Hades and Persephone vibes. Amazing. This book is just tension filled and amazing. I loved it. I love the underworld realm in here. It was so good. 
please read this one. <laughs> then I have Cold Hearted Boss by R.S. Gray. This one is centered around Taylor and Ethan. So Taylor really needs some money and so she thinks she can work at this construction company um, while they're working on a job in her town. However, they're only hiring men. And so she disguises herself as a man to get a job. <laughs> when she meets the boss, she realizes that she knows him and he knows her. Like a month ago, they ended up meeting at a bar and they got in a huge fight meeting there and they instantly became enemies. So then he realizes who this woman is disguised as a man. I was like, you were the girl that I met last month and got in a huge fight, whatever. And so he, he hires her and makes her essentially his like personal assistant slash slave and makes her do like everything for him um it is funny at times i need to read more ice gray because the banter and bickering in her books is amazing immaculate next i have rustic hearts by amber kelly this is another situation where we have a city girl and a country boy and they do not like each other our heroine in here she uh moved to the i think like new york with her mother when she was very young and her father uh, stayed in this very small town. Um, I don't remember where it is. It's called Popular Falls. So I don't know what state it currently is, but um, it's a very small country town. And she hasn't seen uh, her dad in years. And she thinks that he is the reason why uh, her parents aren't together anymore. Then she finds out that her grandmother has passed and she needs to go back to her hometown for the funeral. So she has to reconcile with her dad. And there she meets one of the ranch hands on the ranch whose name is Braxton and they do not get along at all. And there's this like animosity between them because his aunt is married now to her father. And she thinks that, oh, that family replaced me and my mom. I am never gonna be friends with them, never gonna be cordial with them. I'm just gonna ignore them, leave them be and not be happy about this situation. And Braxton is very upset that this daughter has not come in contact with her father in years. And he can tell that her dad is very upset and saddened by this. And so they both have their reasons for not liking each other. And of course, other things go on. They end up falling for each other, obviously. This one is very sim similar to The Simple Wild. So if you want another book like that, please read this one. And last one that I have is Marriage for One by Ella Mays. Now I feel like this one is like a little bit stretching it because it's kind of like dislike or hate to love on like one person's part. You don't really see it in the other person's. Anyway. The summary in here. This is about Jack and Rose. They end up giving, getting in a marriage of convenience um, because she needs help with her business and she's only able to inherit this or get this coffee shop she wants to make unless she's married. And so Jack overhears this and like tells her that who's very rich and he's like, I will help you and we can get married and whatever. But like he is very broody and gruff and very distant and closed off. And so she is very confused as to why this guy would want to be with her she just doesn't like him at first because he's not the nicest you know like he's not the most cordial the most friendly and that's what she would like um as a husband of course the two of them kind of like set their differences aside and fall in love with each other and there might be another reason as to why jack asked rose for this marriage of convenience which you have to read the book to find out why <laughs> but anyways there you have it so those are 10 recommendations uh in the hate to love enemies to lovers dislike to love <laughs> category. Um, please let me know if you've read any of these books or if you plan to, or if you don't feel like commenting any of those things, leave me a ring emoji down in the comments. Also, um, don't forget that there is a code down below, AVA15, to use at Hello Lovely Boxes website um, if you want a discount on your order. Um, but anyways, thank you all so, so much for watching. I will see y'all soon in my next one. Bye y'all!